Hi, you are welcome back. This episode is entitled The Five Arts of Wisdom That Raises a Man. We are learning from the life of David and his sons. In our previous episode, we learned about the five arts of folly and it was related to Adonijah. In this episode, we are learning about the five arts of wisdom that raise a man. And we are learning from the life of Solomon the king. When Adonijah proclaimed himself king, Solomon knew very well that he was the one that was meant to be the king. But Solomon didn't act in any way against his father's will. Neither did he rise up and fight Adonijah, his brother. He remained silent. This was an act of patience. So we would like to learn and inform ourselves that the first act of virtue or the first act of wisdom is patience. Solomon was patient and he waited for the right moment to come. His mother got the, uh, the support of Nathan, the prophet of the day. Nathan advised Solomon's mother, Bathsheba, and Bathsheba acted swiftly. Bathsheba went to the presence of the king and informed the king of what has happened. As Bathsheba was talking with the king, Nathan, the prophet, also went there and gave a very good report of what has happened to King David. After this, we also learn from the life of Solomon. When his brother Adonijah decided to proclaim himself king, Solomon, knowing very well that he was made king according to his father's will, didn't also get up and make himself king, but rather he sought the approval of his father, the king. He sought the approval of God, and he sought the approval of the prophet of the day, Nathan. It was the approval of King David that made Solomon king. Remember, Adonijah's approval of his, of his friends made him a king temporarily, and he was only a king in his own eyes and in the presence of his friends who had gone to support him. But Solomon's patience and Solomon's approval from the right source made him a king. The third act of virtue or the third act of wisdom that raised Solomon was the fact that Solomon sacrificed at the right place. Therefore, we learn from the act of Solomon that we should learn to sacrifice at the right place. When we read from 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 4 downwards, we are informed, and I read, The king went to Gibeon to sacrifice, to offer sacrifices, for that was the most important high place. And Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared unto Solomon during the night in a dream. And God said, As for whatever you want me to give you, so this informs us, Solomon chose to sacrifice at Gibeon. Gibeon, remember, is the place where the altar and the Ark of the Covenant of God resided. Whilst Adonijah decided to sacrifice at Zoheleth, Solomon decided to sacrifice at the altar of the Lord. Where, wherever we choose to sacrifice at the days of our youth, at the period where we have strength, at the period where we have money, at the period, at the period where we have power, is what determines our folly or our wisdom. I remember as a young man, I used to drink a lot and I used to chase women a lot. At a point in my life, I nearly died. I was with a friend in his house and we had drunk ourselves throughout the night. At the middle of the night, I was fortunate. I was at the hall of the particular building 
and suddenly a strange disease fell on me. It was so strange and so serious that I couldn't move my body. Fortunately for me, before, before I passed out, I saw a lady appear. The next thing I remember was that I was in a hospital. I had been diagnosed and the doctor had told me that my blood pressure was so high that I was lucky and fortunate to be alive. I remember deep in the night when I was when the disease fell on me, I prayed this prayer, asking the Lord to give me a second chance and that I was going to serve him with all my strength and with all my heart. But weeks after the disease went away, or I was cured, I went back into drinking and I drank and chased women so much. Whenever I had money, I spent it with my friends and we chased women. At a point in time, it took the intervention of the Lord to realize my folly. I am using my life as an example because just like Adonijah, most of us choose to sacrifice at the wrong places, in the dark places, in the presence of women and in the presence of friends. Solomon decided to sacrifice at the holy place at Gibeon, whilst Adonijah decided to sacrifice at Zohele in the presence or at the place where the women went to fetch water. The difference between Solomon and Adonijah is the place where they chose to sacrifice. At the place of Gibeon, the Lord appeared unto Solomon. At the place of Zohele, Adonijah became confused. Solomon was in the presence of the Lord. As youth, we need to find ourselves in the presence of the Lord. We need to find the approval of the right people. While Solomon waited for the approval of Nathan, while Solomon waited to be led by Nathan, the prophet of God, Adonijah was with his friends and was being led by the armies of the children of Israel. Sometimes we align ourselves with the wrong source of power. As children of God, as young men who want to walk in the sight of the Lord, we should rather seek the approval and the direction of men of God, prophets and men, anointed men of God, who will lead us in the right path in our work with the Lord. As young men, we should learn how to spend more time in the presence of the Lord and in the church of the Lord, rather than seeking to spend more time in the presence of women at wrong places, consuming alcohol and chasing women. The act of Adonijah was an act of folly. But remember, Solomon acted wisely because he chose to spend his time at the presence of the Lord, where he sacrificed and where the Lord appeared unto him. And when the Lord appeared unto him, Solomon had the right motive. Solomon asked for wisdom, whilst Adonijah asked for a woman. The next act of wisdom, as we, we learn from the life of Solomon, is that after Solomon asked for wisdom, he also knew that he had a God that he is serving. And he knew that whatever he asked for, the Lord was going to give him an inheritance as a reward. So he asked for wisdom. We should bear in mind that whatever we ask for, in the first place, we should bear in mind that we are serving a living God. As we learned from the book of Colossians chapter 3, verse 23 to 25, we should learn and understand that whatever we are doing, we are doing it in service to God and not to man or humanity. And we should learn to seek the approval of the Lord. And we should also learn to do things that will only give glory or glorify the name of the Lord instead of doing things to seek the praise or the reward of our human masters. When we do these things, we will act wisely. Remember the acts of wisdom that Solomon did that raised him. Number one is that he was very humble. So humility is the first act of wisdom. Secondly, he was patient. 
when he knew that his brother Adonijah has proclaimed himself king, he didn't act rashly. He was patient. Thirdly, he waited for the right approval. He sought the approval of the anointed one of God. Therefore, we should learn to seek approval from the anointed men of God. We should learn to seek direction from the right men of God. The next is the fact that Solomon had the right intent. And when he had the opportunity to sacrifice, he sacrificed at the house of the Lord. We should learn where we should learn to sacrifice at the house of the Lord. We should learn to sacrifice and use our strength, our money, our wealth for the glorification of the Lord. The next act of wisdom is that Solomon had the right intention. So when he was given the opportunity to ask for something, he asked for wisdom. He needed wisdom because he wanted to serve the Lord well. We should learn to ask for the right thing in the presence of the Lord. This is another act of virtue or wisdom. And lastly, we should always bear in mind that whatever we are doing, we are doing it in service to God and for the glorification of the Lord and not for the approval and praise of men. We are not living to please men, but rather we are living to please the living God. And we should also bear in mind that whatever acts we commit, we will also receive the inheritance thereof. So we should, we should act, we should seek the, in, the right inheritance that will give us peace with the Lord. Thank you for watching us. This is Motivated Minds. You can always subscribe to our channel, Motiminds TV on YouTube. You will get the right messages and good messages of encouragement, motivation, and the right advice that will help you in your work with the Lord. You can also connect with us on Daily Motion at Motiminds TV. We are on Facebook at Motiminds Ghana. You can search for us, Motiminds, and when you connect with us, you will never regret you did. If you have any special talent, you can log on to our website www.motivatedstars.com. Let us know the kind of talents you have. We will help expose you to the world. If you want to join a group of right-minded people, you can also connect with us on our website motiminds.com. We are a group of motivated minds who have come together for the right purpose. Connect with us and you will never regret you. Thank you and God bless you.